Hello, this is Brian Rowe with Mythic MTG Tech doing a series of very short little deck techs here on the top eight decks from Vintage Eternal Weekend. Awesome weekend, really cool decks. 344 players, most of them playing decks that cost the same as a 1975 red Corvette. Incredible, awesome decks and a lot of innovation. In looking at the deck list, I thought I knew most of these deck lists, but once I dove in deeper, there's some really cool stuff going on in Vintage. And there is one budget deck that hit the top eight that costs less than 10% of what all the other decks cost in this environment. So before we hit the top eight, though, I've got a bonus deck list here, which this is an honorable mention. It's called Paradoxical Outcome. This is a hardcore combo deck that is based off of a brand new card, Paradoxical Outcome. It's return any number of target non-land, non-token permanents you control to the owner's hand, draw a card for each card returned to your hand this way. Basically, it acts like a Hercules recall and allows you to combo really quickly with a bunch of artifact mana. We're running three Mox Opals in this deck, Lotus Petal, Mana Crypt, Mana Vault, all of your Moxes, multiple Sensei's Divining Tops, and then you've got your Time Vault key combo in here, and you've got Brain Freeze as a way to mill your opponent out. Really cool, really fast control combo deck here. It's got Tinker and it has Time Twister, yes. Time Twister, that's really what shows you that you're in the crazy combo side of things. Time Twister has been moved to almost exclusively combo decks at this point. The other thing that I really like about this deck is the sideboard. There is a wonderful sideboard here that is transforming, that is transformative and turns it into an Oath of Druids deck. Really cool brewing here, and this is the type of awesome innovation we see all the way through these top eight decks. The winning deck is a classic control deck, Land Still, and Stand Still is one of the most powerful draw cards out there. They're also playing three Mana Drains in this deck. I just really, really like Mana Drain, one of the most underplayed cards in Vintage. We also see some interesting choices here, including Emmercool, Mindbreak Trap, and Supreme Verdict. Mindbreak Trap has been a favorite of mine going back to the Grixis Law deck tech that I did a few years ago for TCC, and Supreme Verdict is just a great way to wipe the board when you've got Eldrazi all over the place and Mentors all over the place. Very, very cool classic control deck wins the tournament. Next up, we have a Stax deck smoke stacks, multiple copies of Crucible of Worlds, and your win conditions in this are twofold. First, you try to grind your opponent out, and then you win with lands. We've got Inventor's Fair making a cameo here, two Muta Vaults, and three, yes, three Tabernacles in the sideboard to help deal with Eldrazi and Mentors. Very cool grindy control deck, not the type of deck you're going to want to play against. The games can be really, really painful. Next, we've got a pair of mentor decks. And looking at these, I was just going to combine them together for a single discussion, but they're fundamentally different decks. This first mentor deck is more of a control deck. We see the Jace VPs in here. We also see Dak Fadens, Gushes, and Narset. This is a classic control deck with Mentors as a win condition. And let's look at that and compare it with Brian's deck over here, which is a combo Mentor deck. We've got four Mentors there, but we've also got Key, Time Vault, Tezzeret, Time Twister. We've got a splash of black in this deck. So Yagmas Will, Thought Cast, Mystic Remora. This has the ability to be a control deck, but also combo win very, very quickly. So fundamentally different mentor decks, both breaking into the top eight. Now we've got a mud deck. And this mud deck is very interesting because mud is the type of deck that I'm used to seeing in Legacy. It is one of the most grueling, painful, and broken decks to play against. 
in Legacy. It's making a splash right now in Vintage because of the Foundry Inspector. You're able to drop a Foundry Inspector with a workshop, drop a Mox or two, play your classic control role here with Tangle Wire, Amethyst Thorn, Sphere of Resistance, locking your opponent out and making them cry because they don't get to play Magic. But then you've got a bunch of innovation in this deck also. Fleet Wheel Cruisers, four of them. Sword of War and Peace. The Sky Sovereign Council Flagship. Yes, I had to look at the list twice. This deck has the ability to ramp, play lots of mana, and then go over the top with vehicles of all things. And the Sword of War and Peace, once again, I had to look at that twice. I'm like, are you sure that isn't some way to draw cards? No, but it gets past the mentors. Beautiful card when everybody has a huge group of mentors out there and you need to swing through and kill your opponent. Wonderful deck playing your vehicles at vintage. Incredible. Now we're moving into Eldrazi. I was expecting to see Eldrazi. Eldrazi is what I have been brewing in Vintage for months now. And we see three Eldrazi decks in the top eight, but each of those Eldrazi decks might all have Thought Knots here, but they also have a different spin on Eldrazi. This first one is the Eldrazi deck that I've been brewing, your white Eldrazi deck. It has seven Thalias in it. The Eldrazi Displacer Containment Priest combo, which is just a powerhouse. This is a control Eldrazi deck that plays really, really well against other fair decks. The Eldrazi Displacer Containment Priest main deck there helps you shut down Dredge right away, get rid of pesky tokens, lock out a Blightsteel Colossus. This is a really powerful combination. The next Eldrazi deck that we're looking at here takes an entirely different focus and avoids white altogether. It plays Treskillians in it, which is a great way to pick off your young Pyromancers, your Delvers, your Mentors. Really nice. More of a hardcore control deck here and not your white aggro deck. And then the third one that we're looking at here is a budget deck that makes it into the top eight at $800. I know that sounds a little bit high, but for vintage, that is a really inexpensive deck. And this is the type of deck that you could trade into and then crush people with ten dollars to $20,000 decks. It feels so good to play a budget deck and walk on people who have these really expensive decks. This deck takes a different approach to Eldrazi. Yes, it's got your Reality Smashers, your Phyrexian Revokers, your Thought Not Seers, and Cavernous, but it also plays a lot of cards that I hadn't expected to see here and was super happy to see in this particular deck. Those include Elvish Spirit Guides, wonderful mana ramp, especially because it gets you around all of that anti-artifact hate that's out there. Null Rods don't stop it, and you're playing your own Null Rods. There's also Ghost Quarters in here, Crucible of Worlds. You're really attacking your opponent's mana base early and often. Phyrexian Metamorph is one of my absolute favorite EDH cards, and it's been playable for a long time in different workshop decks. It's also really wonderful in this Eldrazi deck. Very, very nice way to copy several different cards. And Spatial Contortion, wonderful form of removal. They're playing two of the dismembers. Also, you've got lots of ways to go after your opponent's creatures really early. This is the type of brewing and innovation that I really like to see someone come through with a budget deck, break into the top eight, and do really well at a major tournament with over 300 vintage players. To nullify your opponent's strategies, subscribe to the channel. To support the channel, check us out on Patreon. These wonderful people are supporting the channel and help make it possible. Chess.com is also a sponsor for the channel. If you want to play against me online, go challenge me over at chess.com. And until next time, choose the cards wisely.